and hello everyone, Fraxen here. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Bogue, that is direct, direct evolution of the Langley tier 4. So the Bogue is now the tier 5, and in terms of modules, we have some differences. Uh, you do remember that the Langley only had, as you can see in module 1, um, basically one fighter and one torpedo bomber. Now I get to choose between mod 3 and mod 2. Which basically means in mod 2, I'm going full out attack with one torpedo bomber, two bombers. And that means me completely undefended against enemy um, fighter squadrons. And to be fair, bombers are actually quite terrible. The damage output is ridiculously low and the inaccuracy is also quite low. Therefore, this leaves me with the only option of playing a defensive carrier, even though this is extremely bad for my grinding since apparently... Um, playing defensively with a carrier doesn't boost you in any way so anyway I'm gonna be playing defensively and let's see how it goes here we are directly into the action I skipped a lot of the intro bits and uh, immediately I was here with the Bogue and I immediately engaged the enemy fighters two squadrons versus one should be a very easy easy and tranquil kill I must say that I think my enemy did make a bit of a displacement mistake since I clear out uh, six of his planes with only one lost and pretty much the same fate awaits his bombers although I am very wary because I see that on the radar other uh, fighters are approaching and also the anti-aircraft of the Omaha and possibly the South Carolina may be a threat here so here I'm just um, when you're playing let's say aircraft carrier you have to be wary of uh, quite a few things uh, enemy anti-aircraft uh, aircraft movements and also your um, your ammunition levels of your planes because as you will show, uh, as I will have to showcase sadly, I will have a bit of a problem dealing with that. <laughs> Un attimo. But here we are, and again engaging uh, another uh, group of fighters. It should be easy, but as you can see my uh, second group of fighters is actually having a bit of a hard time and has to go back since it doesn't have any more... Um, Ammunition and here I do make a pretty big mistake. I had pressed the F key on my third group on my th on my second squadron uh, Which is the recall button sadly. I thought I'd pressed it only for the second squadron instead I did press it also for the third and I got annihilated. I still had three uh, Planes that uh, maybe not sufficient to kill the entire enemy squadron, but still uh, probably enough to to do uh, to hit some casualties. I'm sorry for now. I'm having a bit. I've I've messed up the audio. There was some problem during the initial recording, and uh, there will be probably one minute here and one minute afterwards in which there is uh, no audio, but no problem. In the meantime, I've also been directing my dive bombers towards the enemy battleships and very controversial uh, dive bombers. Uh, how to use them, there's a lot of controversy on the forums also on how much damage they do and ideally what I found out after some experimentation that it's uh, even with auto aim uh, it's very easy to hit uh, battleships and also do well not good amounts of damage but you set them on fire so basically uh, you're a pop the repair um, type of attack. As you can see here, I'm going to the Miyogi, it's decently aimed, but as you can see, 3 hits, about 4k, 5k damage, and 3 sets on fires. So if he pops his uh, repair and then there's sub, like another maybe uh, bomber squad coming afterwards, I mean torpedo bombers, then at that point you can see how that if they cause flooding, he's gonna have to flood for a very long time before he can repop his repair, which is usually about around 1 minute, 1 minute 10. So here I was just checking out who against who we were playing, it's Bogan Langley versus Bogan Langley. Here I was also slightly a bit worried about our friendly aircraft carrier, which has not been moving. That is also, uh, that can also be quite decisive in aircraft carrier games. It's very important to, um, to move around, uh, to not be static, because also how far you are from the actual active zone of battle, of course, as you can imagine, determines... Um, the rapidity with which you can counter enemy flights, um, airplanes, and also uh, how fast you can, let's say, uh, do DPS. And here I could see on the minimap that my ally is going to hunt some more torpedo bombers, and I'm thinking of following suit, although I'm not thrilled by the prospect of going in a, let's say, a cruiser-dense area, which could lead, let's say, to massive anti-aircraft uh, fire. And I've tried dueling, 
uh, fighters versus fighters even we have uh, an Omaha or a Phoenix which don't really have great anti-aircraft but trust me it's a pretty much uh, it's a very uphill battle so in the meantime I was um, as I was as I kind of got stopped in the middle of the way uh, so as we said dive bombers very effective on battleships but if necess if uh, necess if necessary can also be used on air on um, cruisers rather effectively although it gets a bit trickier in the meantime and of course here I'm trying to focus the Phoenix because I'm afraid that the Phoenix is gonna sink uh, our, uh, our my allied aircraft carrier so I send uh, one group to assist the allied fighters and I send the other group to fight instead the torpedo bombers and I'm feeling quite safe I mean the Minikaze uh, anti-aircraft I don't really care I'm slightly worried about that Phoenix uh, but I, it seems I'm not that much into ranger that's focusing my allies so that's okay uh, I managed to pretty much destroy the, um, the enemy fighters, which is to be expected. And here I do overreach a little bit. Uh, my dive bombers on automatic uh, managed to do quite some damage on uh, the enemy Phoenix, also to set some fire. And here I make a bit of, well, I'm a bit unlucky here, because as you see this scout plane going on, well, my three apparently can't manage to, t to destroy the last uh, torpedo bomber. So what happens here? is that uh, that group 3 is gonna basically finish its ammunition and will get basically wrecked by that sole, um, let's say, um, scout plane, which is absolutely ridiculous. I get like three or four planes destroyed by one scout. Uh, so this was, um, I mean, I did overreach in trying to kill those uh, bombers, so I think it's partially my mistake and but partially also the other guy that got really lucky in managing to to get his scout plane exactly where he needed it to be however having said that i'm trying i'm i'm very worried about my allied aircraft carrier i mean i'm down to only four um fighters so i really need him to to help me cover the skies because alone it's not going to be easy i mean i've shot down already 23 planes so i'm feeling rather comfortable but still in order to better protect our team i'd really need also his squadron so once again, my dive bombers are going to be focusing down cruisers because as you can see there are two, two cruisers approaching um, the north side where um, there are a couple of our cruisers and one aircraft carrier. So the Omaha is slowly getting whittled down and that's good. And here I'm just checking the situation. There's you see a Phoenix and a Omaha but they're not, uh, they don't have a lot of health. So here I'm actually debating if it's worth uh, hitting the Kuma rather than the Omaha. Uh, but but I need to do damage. I absolutely need to do damage and In the meantime, I'm also a bit worried and concerned that I because I see a, a fighter squadron uh, Coming on the way to hunt down my dive bombers, which could would be terrible because I only have three substitutes and Here I start to see that they're here and luckily I must say uh, my ally did great and he managed to to give me some backup that was really important so here I then try to move around and here I also see a Minikaze and as you can see like I'm being attacked by that dumb let's say um, scout plane which decides to leave me alone luckily enough and because as you can see when you're under fire then like your aim is not is not accurate at all and here on the Kuma I didn't have the time to actually um, to say hit as I, I would have wanted but actually get let's say the maximum possible damage out of my bombs uh, 5k uh, that's not bad my other squadron has come to assist uh, the fighters of my allies my dive bombers are just uh, turning back to my position and as you can see on the map I mean uh, I've, I've always tried to move since the beginning of the game uh, towards safety and away from enemy fire I think that's fundamental to master uh, in very tight games if you want to survive and still be effective during the entire you know, of the entirety of the game because sure of course I'm getting further away from the action uh, which means I will be slower in bombing and also being on the spot uh, but if I'd been like my allied uh, let's say aircraft carrier I'd be directly under fire by pretty much two cruisers and now also one battleship and I think it's more important to be actually effective than actually be sunk after five minutes so the game looks to be going progressing quite nicely um, it appears that we're managing to defend uh, the above aircraft carrier uh, we're five ship we've sunk five ships and only got two 
I can see that our there's a destroyer and a, and a cruiser that have managed to spot the enemy aircraft carriers. So I'm actually thinking that um, this should go really smoothly. I also see a South Carolina. So finally, my dive bombers can go back to bombing, let's say, their preferred targets. Uh, that's our battleships. However, it has to be mentioned that uh, with a little bit of skill uh, and also a little bit of complacency on the part uh, of others, it's entirely possible to hit uh, destroyers also. It's not the easiest of things, there could be some RNG involved, but uh, if you're patient enough, uh, they can also be hit. And here I'm, I'm actually wondering why is it taking so much to sink uh, the two uh, enemy aircraft carriers since there's a destroyer right on top of them, and I, and I, I mean I understand that they're running away from it, um, but I, I honestly I, would, I was expecting them to be um, let's say dead a bit faster than before. Here I'm just making sure that my dive bombers uh, are approaching the South Carolina and I was considering helping out once again to the north, the battle group were with my aircraft carrier but I figured out that's kind of a uh, lost battle. In the meantime I managed to get my uh, remaining fighter squadron here to engage uh, the remaining planes uh, one of the two aircraft carriers uh, um, gets shot down, finally, and there's basically two groups of um, torpedo bombers, which I can easily dispatch, even though I have only four planes, you know, fighters, so that's gonna take a little bit more than expected. Uh, but as far as I'm annoying them, as far as I'm harassing them and, like, slowly mowing them down, that's okay. Here I'm just making sure that my dive bombers are gonna come in nicely. And... Effectively, here I'm actually wondering, I only got one hit, and you see this is sometimes what happens uh, when you're trying to grind the Bogue, which is which has, bis basically this is the only form of uh, DPS you have, and effectively of uh, grinding more experience, you see you only do like 2k damage and no sets on fires, and that's the moments where you might be a little bit disappointed by uh, this type of aircraft carrier. But anyway, uh, I'm, uh, I'm gradually making my way to the south. I did manage to get the achievement Clear Skies, uh, which is usually typical when you uh, get to play um, with, the, with the aircraft carrier, such as the Bogue, with a defensive asset. Here the enemy Bogue manages to dodge the torpedoes quite nicely, and I was also complementing a, the Phoenix on our team because it had got Give quite me. a few kills. And, and here we thought, actually, I thought here we were going to win. Uh, but uh, one of our battleships decides to exit the cap circle, therefore losing all the points we had accumulated. So uh, the clock is gradually ticking down, and from now on it's really going to be a bit of a uh, mop-up, really, because I'm, I'm expecting my, um, my companions to basically shut down the second aircraft carrier. Uh, the enemy team is dispersed, but in the top you will see that a pesky destroyer is actually uh, managing to finally sink our um, friendly aircraft carrier. So here I decide to go for most effectiveness, also because I'm gradually moving between one island and the other, and I'm rather scared that this Wyoming may actually be capable of sinking me, because it's well within range, I'm hiding be behind my island, and I'm considering if it's worth uh, trying to traverse to the bigger island. But I'm thinking that the Wyoming is a battleship, it can fire on me uh, very slowly and it's absolutely not looking at me, it's actually firing at the, at the cruiser. Uh, so I think that maybe if the cruiser can use um, high explosive shots, um, it can set on fire, he uses a repair, I use my dive bombers, he sets on fire, he doesn't have any repair. And so even though we don't have maybe the, uh, the actual firepower to take him down, we could actually uh, burn him out. And here you see like a measly uh, 891 damage, uh, but one set on fire. But of course, you, 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 you clearly understand how it's gonna take forever if I'm gonna do 800 damage at a time. Of course, it's a battleship, uh, it's strongly armed, and, and so on and so forth. But still, you're dropping like six bombs, like exactly on top of him, and you can only manage to land one. Uh, so it's, it, it can get a little bit uh, frustrating. Uh, and here I was, um, I was just hoping that we could burn him down and uh, somehow salvage the our cruiser. Uh, in the meantime, actually, the enemy team has caught up quite a lot. We are uh, eight uh, ships sunk to seven. Uh, my, by the way, my fighters are gradually closing down on the torpedo bombers, the last that have remained. 
uh, although they were directionless. And here I must say the Phoenix does some quite awesome evasive action from the fire of the Wyoming. Uh, since the distance is very short, uh, now my dive bombers are pretty much on a hit and run, let's say, uh, rapid reload um, mode. And I'm also trying to, to figure out how if our allies... I mean, here I'm starting to doubt if we can actually win this. I mean, sure, one of their battleships is about to die, but I'm actually clueless if the other battleship um, can actually survive. But it actually, the other battleship in, uh, that was in uh, lower right corner actually gets destroyed. And here I'm just hoping to end it very quickly against this Wyoming and hopefully manage to save the cruiser. And as you can see here, I'm about to take aim. I do about 2k damage, but luckily the fire uh, solves the problem. So at this point, I know that there's a destroyer because I caught a glimpse of it before uh, in the top left corner. Here, as you can see, the Kuma gets completely destroyed by my teammates. So it just looks perfect. We have basically three minutes and a half to get to the cap point. And here I'm trying to uh, to show people that the destroyer was there. And I'm just hoping that uh, we can actually manage to close this uh, down before um, the end of the timeline. So I'm just saying uh, the destroyer was around C2. And correctly, I actually, during the game, I hadn't really recognized that there was so little time missing. And at that point, uh, of course, my teammates are like, we have to cap, we have to cap. It's the only way uh, to make it work. So I, I had actually ordered my um, my fighters to get back to the aircraft carrier, but I'm thinking no, they could actually be used to scout up north and try to maybe hit the destroyer with the uh, with the dive bombers. I mean, it's entirely possible. It's not uh, unheard of, and maybe if if I get lucky, if the if I can also like if I can get a pretty nice mix of skill and luckiness, I can manage to hit it. And so here I see the, this Minikaze pop out, and it's looking rather good, because I think he's like on a very straight path, and here he just uh, veers a lot, really changes direction, and my dive bombers just like start, uh, he also of course has anti-aircraft, and they just like can't manage to lock down, I mean I've, I'm also like changing direction quite a few times. But you'll have to, you'll find out that actually uh, maneuvering dive bombers is rather Mm, it's a it's trickier than you what would you what you would think so here I'm though I'm feeling okay I mean it looks like this destroyer isn't going to be moving uh, anytime soon finally my um, torpedo bombers managed to to go on it and you can hear me let's say not being very happy in the before mentioned and so here I can see we only have a minute and 30 and I'm thinking well we're so close that if uh, the enemy destroyer doesn't manage to sink me, I may get a second chance to fire my dive bombers. So, you know, I have a 23 reload time, um, clock is ticking down, we have only 1 minute 15, um, the, the ships are in the cap circle, but it, it's to, it seemed to me that it wasn't progressively quick, it wasn't progressing uh, quickly enough. So here I also take manual control, of the aircraft carrier, I really want to try to uh, to win the game, and uh, in order to win the game, I need to launch my dive bombers and avoid the torpedoes. So here, I'm just waiting for the Minikaze to shoot, is to unload, and I was expecting him to have to have done it right now. And so this is going to be extremely tricky. So I'm trying to stay uh, in the middle of those torpedoes and try to. Avoid and I'm very lucky and they managed to avoid to just like slip in between So now it's pretty much the dance of death because we have about uh, 30 seconds on the clock I'm not sure we will be managing to cap and I'm trying also to dodge the torpedoes being fired by this Minakaze So uh, the dive bombers are trying to acquire the target I, I I'm really hoping they will lock on because like we don't have the time. There's only 10 seconds literally on the clock uh, somebody else is firing on the Minikaze and I see torpedoes, I can dodge them and I'm just like hoping for it to work out and incredibly uh, the dive bombers managed to sink the destroyer uh, just after I had managed to get sunk by the enemy Minikaze and as you could have seen time was extremely running out I think that happened in the last three seconds of the game 
and uh, I mean it it felt incredibly good to have managed to to land such a shot on the destroyer just to win the game and to you know just to settle the the odds and when it it felt uh, I was very enthusiastic about it I really didn't think I could uh, I could do it and as you can see I had a lot of sets on fire quite a few target hits so it's actually like setting on fire uh, nine times out of ten uh, shooting down 35 planes, uh, two enemies destroyed, and I did make some mistakes like in managing my plane, so I still think there's room for improvement, but it just goes to show you that you can actually manage uh, to pull out some interesting games even with a bow that is equipped defensively. Here I was just making sure to see that I had actually sunk the enemy destroyer, as you can see the Minikaze is there, one hit, it had been sunk. Uh, direct bomb hits, you know, about 20k hits, I mean, a bit of fire damage, I mean, you're not strong, too strong on uh, on damage, but it's okay. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this epic game, and I will see you guys next time.